Well, Christmas has been celebrated. But the message of Christmas changes something forever. Today we celebrate Epiphany, which literally translated means from the voice of God. From the voice, Epiphany. It's a season when we remember how God has revealed himself through the ages, and most of all now in the person of Christ. It's a very short season, a few weeks. And amongst other things, today is a day, this season is a day, when we ask, what is the voice of God saying to us today? Through the ages, God had spoken through the patriarchs, through the prophets, in the lives of the saints, in stillness and in calm, in confusion and in despair, through ordinary and remarkable events, and in individual lives. Through history and now, God reveals himself. Again and again, people had cried to God, show yourself. And through history and in the fullness of time, God did. And here is the revelation against all expectations, contrary to all concepts of human power and strength, revealed in a vulnerable child, here is the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you in a child in a stable. But more remarkable still is that his light still shines and the voice of God still speaks in the risen Christ, present now, when we discern his word amidst the clamour of opinion and prejudice of human motives and desire of violence and politics. The epiphany, the voice of God, is still amongst us, speaking through the scriptures, speaking through events, speaking through people, whispering in our very hearts and in our very beings, waiting to be heard, waiting for our response, but never forcing himself upon us. We're all familiar with the story of the wise men. It's generally believed that the figures referred to were from Persia, members of a priestly caste who studied astronomy. Scholars examining the scriptures and, of the, and the astronomy of the time suggest that he could have visited the infant anything up to two years after his birth, which in fact would correspond with the detail of Herod deciding to murder all the male children in Bethlehem under the age of two years old. Whatever the historical facts, the wise men were people of profound learning and insight. But their wisdom also lies in the fact that they not only discerned hidden truths, but were willing to make a long and arduous journey to verify them. Their journey is both a physical one and a spiritual one. It's a symbol of the journey of understanding that we are all invited to make and to embark upon. Just as the incarnation itself is a symbol of the universality of Jesus' purpose revealed to the humble, the wise, and the foreigner before it is even revealed to the Jewish people. Jesus is not to be owned, controlled, or boxed up in human categories of origin or purpose. He is shown to be for all people for all time. Have we begun the long, arduous of journey of discovery to find Jesus? But even the wise men sought the Messiah first in the corridors of power. And it only dawned on them after they had visited Jesus that to reveal his, this mystery to Herod would cause considerable danger to the child. Even they weren't sure where to look. And even they were surprised at where they eventually found him. Their journey, like our own spiritual journey, should be, was indeed, a search, a journey into the unexpected. Even their wisdom and their astronomy 
could not predict how God was to act in the world, even to them he remained a God of surprises, a God who in coming amongst us became dependent upon humanity to be fed, to be clothed and to be sustained. A God who needs us to enable his work to be done. A God who comes amongst us in humility and reveals his love to the humble and oppressed as well as the powerful, the suffering as well as the strong. A God who challenges all human expectations of power and action in the world. So this is the God who has revealed to us the voice of God, revealed to us as Biphany. And how does that challenge us to reflect on where we see God revealed today? What does this say to us about our attitude to the other? Or our attitude to the thousands fleeing conflict, persecution and poverty? Or the situations that have often been fueled by the actions and policies, maybe, of our own governments. Traditionally, the Epiphany season recalls two other events that show God's revelation in Christ. So in the coming two Sundays, you will also hear about the baptism of Jesus and the changing of water into wine at Cana. Both these stories also reveal powerful truths. First, that Jesus himself receiving the baptism of forgiveness and of cleansing points the way to the cleansing and the transformation that we are called to make in our lives. And secondly, that in the ordinary stuff of life, symbolized in the water, that ordinary stuff of life is transformed into the sign of the kingdom, symbolized in the wine. We the ordinary people of life are to be transformed into people of the kingdom. <coughs> you and I are called to be transformed. And the three gifts of the wise men are a symbol of the gifts that we all bring as well. Whatever wealth we possess, symbolized in gold, is to be used in God's service and for the good of all humanity. As individuals, as communities, as churches, as nations? Do we use our gifts for the good of all humanity? Billions of pounds worth of arms deals. In fact, 24 of the 27 nations <coughs> that our arms deals are done are go to the world's most um, worst human rights record nations for the good of all humanity. Our wealth is to be used for the good of humanity. The second gift is incense, used for millennia as a symbol of prayer and fragrant offering to God by people and cultures and religions all over the world for, for centuries, for millennia. It's a reminder of that most important commandment of all. You shall love the Lord your God. And we say it every week, but there's powerful little phrases. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Powerful stuff. Loving the other can be the only response to the love of God, who is the creator of all. But it's a challenge that takes an effort and a journey. And finally, in myrrh, lies the symbol of healing and anointing in death. Jesus is the supreme healer who achieves the conquest of all suffering and even death itself. As we open ourselves to his healing in our lives, so we are to act as agents of his healing in the world. So each of these gifts given by the wise men remind us of our response and our responsibility as we leave the excitement of Christmas behind. That we may be transformed in the likeness of Christ, bringing our wealth in his service, 
through prayer and service, bringing, uh, being a light to the other, and like myrrh, being an instrument of healing in the world. And so at Epiphany we follow the wise men in their long and difficult journey to discover the truth of God's revelation, how he revealed himself in the world and in what ways. And we follow them too on their long journey back to their and our daily lives. But like them, hopefully, we are changed by this wonderful encounter. And we are challenged by this awesome mystery of which we are called to be a part. And from now on, our journey must take the difficult path that Jesus treads, even though he faces ridicule, opposition and suffering for doing so. Epiphany, the voice of God, reminds us that the light of the world is still present. It shines in the darkness and the darkness has never extinguished it and it never will. That light is Christ and he invites each of us to discover him and then to follow him. So the journey of Christmas is not over. It does not end here, I should say. It is just the beginning. And he needs us to shine his light in a searching and a floundering world. The challenge for us here is to discern what does that mean for us here today and in the year to come. And that's some of what we'll be doing in the parish in January 26 and in the months ahead as we discover what it means to be followers of Christ and to follow, to listen out for that epiphany, the voice of God speaking through us here, now, today, and in the world around us. Amen.